искренне пожелать, чтобы вы плодотворно поработали. Дело в том, что тем, чем вы занимаетесь, это вы кормите людей и сами, наверное, тоже едите. Значит, то есть мы все живем хорошо. Я просто надеюсь, что благодаря вашей сегодняшней эффективной работе нам будет еще лучше житься. Так что вперед, мой кабинет 404, если все здесь не сможете обсудить, то приходите ко мне, там дверь будет открыта. Да, спасибо большое. Уважаемые коллеги, ученые, деятели науки, естественно, те, кто преподают и в нашем ВУЗе, и в других, и, естественно, те, кто ведет нашу, наше сельское хозяйство такими сложными путями, но все-таки к победным целям, как мы считаем. Это пятая наша экспертная дискуссия, которая проводилась за последнее время. И надо сказать, что раз от раза она становится все более интересной и как по отзывам, и по нашим ощущениям. Я должна сказать, что одним из инициаторов этой конференции был Виктор Федорович Лищенко, которого многие из вас знают, который, к несчастью, два года тому назад ушел из жизни. И я прошу, ввиду того, что он очень много сделал для наших мероприятий всех, давайте почтим его память вставания. Спасибо большое. О сегодняшней программе. Значит, когда мы обдумывали различные варианты названий нашей экспертной секции, мы после некоторых, так сказать, сомнений, споров и так далее, пришли вот к, той, к тому названию, которое у нас сейчас звучит таким образом. Агропродовольственная сфера, двоеточие, пробьется ли Россия на мировой рынок? Я должна пояснить, что слово сочетание агропродовольственной сферы тоже введено по результатам наших работ. И мы считаем, что этот термин и это понятие должны войти в нашу и повседневную научную жизнь, и в наши труды и так далее. Потому что агропродовольственная сфера – это многофункциональная, очень сложная система, которая решает не только проблемы экономические, но связанные с аграрной проблематикой, но это и развитие социальной сферы села, и это экологические проблемы, связанные вот тоже со всем тем, что происходит в сельском хозяйстве и гораздо шире даже. Поэтому, если вы не будете против, вот мы предлагаем одним из решений нашей дискуссии вот употреблять этот тем, термин агропродовольственной сферы. В какой-то мере, может быть, вместо словосочетания АПК. Ну и что мы, собственно говоря, хотели сегодня обсудить. Довольно много вопросов, они были и разосланы в какой-то мере, но главное это понять, в каком состоянии находится у нас сейчас агро, агропродовольственная сфера и продовольственная безопасность страны. И в каком направлении мы должны двигаться для того, чтобы усиливать роль агропродовольственной сферы и, главное, добиваться устойчивого продовольственной безопасности страны. А если это нам будет помогать еще и становиться крупным экспортером сельскохозяйственной продукции и продовольствия, то это будет очень хорошее сочетание. Конкретные вопросы многочисленные. Это и управление, и подготовка кадров и так далее. И по мере того, как будут выступать наши спикеры и приглашенные товарищи, мы будем понимать, с чем мы имеем дело, в каком направлении мы можем работать. И дискуссии, которая состоится, тоже, я думаю, даст нам достаточно богатый материал для работы. Сью. 
one thing I would like to tell you that as part of our expert discussion, we will have uh, like a poll for experts and you will be giving sheets of paper where you will have uh, just to take your attitude uh, using a number of uh, performance indi indicators to a number of phenomena that once uh, we review the poll results, we will be able to understand how our community tackles uh, the agricultural and food industry indicators. So just please um, put your mark. There is a, a special scale with points, and we will also distribute uh, in the audience uh, some sheet of paper with for feedback about uh, logistics, uh, the development of a new area in agri-logistics. So at the end of the day, we, after our discussion ends, we will have uh, to make a decision uh, which will be published and also the analysis uh, following the result of our session. And I believe that you will be uh, happy at the end of the day that you will not to waste your time here with us. So let's uh, thank each other for being here. So, and the first. So, Mr. Korolev. Okay. So, uh, as you are the head of the um, Supervisory Council of the uh, Ministry of the Agriculture, and so no one is represented from the ministry, so you will have to be responsible. So, please. Uh, tell us about the successes and the prospects of uh, uh, the agricultural sector for accessing the uh, foreign markets. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I would not like to speak on behalf of the Ministry of uh, Agriculture because I am not uh, representing it, although we are in a constant uh, contact, in a constant interaction with many of the forum's uh, participants, and we have some ideas as uh, representatives of the industry associations, ideas on how to develop the agri-food sector. And uh, most of our initiatives are being supported, and we see uh, how this is uh, implemented in practice. So uh, successes are obvious to anyone. So almost everyone is saying that the agri-food business is the driver for the Russian economy and uh, the expected growth uh, for the year is about 5% and the pace uh, from 3 to to 4 to 5% um, have been observed for over 10 years now, and it would make sense uh, to cover areas in agri-food business which have uh, already become mature enough for us to change the paradigm and change uh, the directions of development. And uh, there are some areas you still have to focus on, given that we need to think on how we need to saturate our own market. So please put the slides on. And I would like to show you how um, our agriculture develops in terms of growth, just uh, as an example. So please uh, put the slides on. Uh, yes. So have a look. 
also as I am representing the uh, food and uh, vegetable association uh, and also I'm focused on developing the greenhouse vegetables so in greenhouse vegetables we have about 14 percent of growth in grain it's 13.7 uh, percent uh, with pork it's almost 10 percent uh, aquaceous bioresources uh, 5.5 percent uh, poultry um, 3.9 percent and uh, open ground vegetables uh, 0.7 percent so almost uh, all the sectors are growing so these which I intended to substitute import grow a little bit faster others grow a little bit slower although we have an exception um, like grain production which uh, has been showing uh, really stunning dynamics in a few recent years and now I would like to switch to my topic which is about uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, later on I will uh, give you some statements and ideas on the development of the agriculture in general so as for vegetables we are growing there is a growth and you see that we have a surplus in our agricultural organizations it's not so that high but still so in vegetables so we see uh, the light products of uh, 63 three percent so um, uh, vegetables uh, like potato are still uh, being grown as for open ground vegetables uh, have a look we still have a growth uh, which is observed uh, almost every year in production so the forecast for this year is about um, two percent of growth and uh, what's interesting, we um, had a growth in imports uh, for um, vegetables from the uh, open ground. And it has to do with the weather conditions. So a long uh, spring and a cold uh, summer. So and we had uh, uh, intense import from other countries which grew by 15% uh, but uh, the growth in production made 20% uh, which is quite substantial so what comes next uh, please have a look at this slide I would like to move to the greenhouse uh, vegetables so this is a nice example on how uh, there can be a partnership between uh, the public sector and the business to come to some achievements. So we had some examples so with meat products and uh, vegetables. So uh, three or four years ago, a new program was launched with the amount of investment in greenhouse projects uh, made 170 billion rubles. And together with the uh, upgrade, it made uh, nearly um, 200 uh, billion rubles and uh, the state invested about uh, 30 billion uh, rubles as part of the state run programs so this is an indication that now the state uh, has confidence in business and business has confidence uh, in uh, state so we managed to create uh, 25 uh, thousand new jobs which is uh, a good achievement for um, an industry which has been at stall so we also uh, built more than mm, 770 hectares of new greenhouses areas we increased the volume of production by 71 percent compared to 2012 and uh, I'm excited to say that this year, despite all the harsh economic uh, conditions, we saw a growth in demand. So we began with our proper production, uh, with our own, uh, with the share of uh, domestic uh, products being 36%. At the moment, we reached uh, 62 
two percent of our products being domestic. So I think that uh, this year uh, we can come close to one uh, million tons of production, but we see that the growth was of seventy-one uh, percent. So, for example, uh, earlier this year, so we had a growth uh, in tomato, which made twenty-five percent, and we had some heavy investments by businesses. And uh, one year before, it was just seventeen percent. Uh, so, I hope that we can keep the pace until we have our market fully saturated. And the response from the consumer has been quite active. So there is a demand for the Russian products. We see a growth in demand for the Russian products. And uh, the consumer prefers Russian uh, products, which is an important factor uh, to keep getting investments and to keep having the development. So you see different dynamics for tomatoes and for the cucumbers and it's clear that uh, next year in 2018 the tippers will, will be as low as possible so we will produce 90 percent of cucumbers in russia so the situation is a little bit worth worse with uh, tomatoes last year we had uh, our domestic production of uh, 41 production and we imported uh, 60 percent of tomatoes although we began with 70% of domestic uh, production in 2015. So we expect that in the next uh, three to four years, we will have imports uh, almost uh, fully substituted for tomatoes and uh, cucumbers, and we will reach uh, 95%. As for the dynamics for the fruits, This is an area where we heavily depend on imports. Um, so every year um, uh, we develop uh, 14,000 hectares of uh, gardens. And the new gardens uh, owe much to the uh, public support. Uh, uh, so because uh, there, is, there are subsidies of 20% uh, from the state for new gardens and also for uh, seed storage facilities. As for the experts, uh, of course, uh, for the vegetables, um, we are still far away, although we have uh, beans and related uh, uh, cultures, so, um, and we export some of them, like peanut. However, um, in 2017, uh, we started to export some uh, potato. We tried to um, penetrate the exported market in the neighboring countries. So at the moment, it's um, uh, hard to deliver uh, products to um, uh, overseas to the countries which are far away but, uh, because they. Mm, they did not last long. Okay, my next slide. Uh, you see the vegetables, uh, fruits, and berries are the items. Um, if you would compare the consumption, the demand offered by standards from the Research Institute for Food Industry, so we still uh, fail to reach. Uh, 80 or 90 percent. So this is the niche in the market which we have to develop further. Uh, now regarding um, this self-supply uh, of agricultural food. So this is the doctrine for our food security. For potatoes, it's 97 uh, percent. Uh, for open ground vegetables, it's 95 percent. Uh, so meat uh, from the bovine cattle, 90% uh, sugar, 89% uh, vegetable oil, 84% uh, uh, milk, 82%, uh, uh, greenhouse uh, vegetable, 60%, and fruits, 39%. Uh, the two items at the bottom are where the sectors which are getting uh, have subsidies from the mm, governments. The main focus is on these two bottom positions. So my next point is as for this uh, food security doctrine, we 
have discussions on how it can be changed. So in our opinion, it should be corrected and adjusted. We need to include some more food products uh, because the diet of a modern person uh, has become wider. We need to include fruits and vegetables. And we cannot uh, talk about uh, food security if we don't resolve the problem with seeds. So this is something very painful for us, but we need to develop it. So if we don't resolve uh, developing the seed breeding industry, if we don't produce our own domestic seeds, then we will have a dependence uh, from other countries, which is 90 to 95 percent in open ground seasons. The situation is a little bit better with uh, potato and sugar beet, but the program adopted by the Ministry of Agriculture in terms of the technical developments, it provides for uh, bridging the gap uh, in the short run. So we need some achievements in uh, seed selections, in genetics, in seed breeding. Otherwise, we cannot talk about uh, the food security of the country. It would not be correct. So this is the main emphasis we need to put in order to uh, keep our positions in the domestic market. And we also need to think on how we can uh, ac uh, access uh, foreign markets. Thank you. One question, please. Yes, we put the microphone on. Uh, what do you do to improve availability of uh, seeds? Uh, one year ago, we heard the official uh, uh, report from Minister Tkachev that our dependence uh, on seeds is about 90 percent. But do we have any systemic approach or just individual steps? Because back in the 90s, we worked on a project uh, where an American company was brought by the uh, prime minister like for corn uh, in the Belgrade region. I think that uh, this uh, forage uh, Corn uh, is still being produced, but this is a big problem. So, is it a question or rather a comment? Well, oh, well, yes. I wanted uh, the question to be detailed. Okay, okay. Uh, let me give you some bullets to answer. First of all, so we have now the program for reimbursing uh, capital spending on. Um, seed production industry. Um, there is a new ruling from the government, uh, 524, with the compensations of up to 40 percent for selection and seed breeding center, which will, which would focus not on Jan just replenishing uh, seeds, but on developing new species. This is the research basis, uh, which is absolutely necessary. We can uh, focus on um, multiplications, but we are still uh, addicted to this. So what the Chinese colleagues do? They just buy uh, foreign companies. Uh, recently, they bought a company which is 40 billion worth. So otherwise, you would have have to import technologies and bring them into the countries. So probably it's possible. We need to think of it. Maybe our domestic investors need support from the state so that we could buy foreign um, enterprises to bring technologies here. Otherwise, we will never catch up. And uh, as for specific details, we have subsidies uh, for particular costs. Now, uh, let's move from vegetables to grain. And of course, um, we are very happy to welcome Mr. Arkady Zlachevsky, who is president of the Russia's Grain Union. And um, as we are uh, Press for time. Uh, we want to give you 10 minutes to share your ideas with us. 
Thank you. So the first thing I would like to mention in one of our main statements, we have two key problems, uh, which include uh, food security and our integration into the world uh, agri-food uh, business. So my estimates are a little bit different from what we heard regarding the food security and our extent of integration. So regarding food security, we don't have any doctrine of food security. We have a doctrine of uh, food independence, uh, which is called uh, the doctrine um, of uh, so if you would look into the parameters, as Mr. Sergi showed us, so what's uh, specified in our doctrine? We have uh, some standards on availability of certain products for the population of the Russian Federation. But this is food independence. But all uh, problems related uh, to food security are related to our like. Um, solvency and consumers uh, consumers solvency so in recent three years uh, we are seeing a continuous decline in bias uh, capacity and this is a problem for the uh, food security we have a lot of uh, uh, people which like uh, money to buy products uh, uh, to ensure that their diet includes all products as prescribed by healthcare norms. And we cannot uh, provide uh, the food basket uh, based on exclusively our domestic resources. So, and regarding our integration, uh, for years we have been large exporters of uh, grain. So we are present at uh, the world's grain market from 2002. So this has been an incredible start. Uh, no other country in the world uh, uh, have had entered uh, the world market uh, like this. So our exports uh, reached 1.5 uh, million tons, uh, which included Oliferous uh, countries, uh, sunflower seeds. Um, so in 2002, um, our exports uh, reached uh, 17.6 million tons. Then we had a slight drop. Uh, then there was a rebound. And uh, so this year, I guess uh, we will reach... Uh, um, 47 million tons, or even maybe 50 million. And we are the leaders in wheat exports. However, uh, as for the food products uh, balance, it's still negative. Probably in 2017, our agri-food uh, exports would exceed uh, 20 billion dollars. However, in 2017, we again began to increase uh, the buying price, and we will again exceed 30, uh, 30 billion US dollars in our agri food. Uh, Imports, and this is a confirmation that as for the food security, so this is where we still have to work. As for the food independence, yes, we reached some, we achieved uh, some successes, and we are supplying our own population with the uh, domestic products. But the exports balance has still been negative, and as for our extent of uh, integration in the world agri-food business, we sh need to focus on how deep it is. Mostly it's uh, feedstock. We uh, are a major supplier of uh, uh, oil and uh, butter and sunflower oil and uh, a number of other you know, beans and other uh, different products, uh, lots of other different products. but. Um, uh, 
who is uh, the leader of um, pre uh, of processing, which which is Turkey. Uh, they are leaders in flour f from 12 million tons of um, uh, flour. They uh, now have come up to about uh, 40 percent, about 5 million tons out of 12. And uh, all this flour is processed uh, from Russian uh, uh, grain, from Russian wheat, uh, and then they produce uh, value-added uh, products. And the depth of our integration is not very high. But and if you look, for instance, uh, at uh, the uh, U.S. food product, uh, the U.S. they are leading, and their annual supplies um, come up to about 140 billion dollars. Um, uh, number two goes Brazil, about 115 billion dollars. And if we uh, look at the leaders of those supplies, we will see the following thing: that the main focus uh, is made on the high tech uh, products uh, with high value, um, added value supplies. For instance, uh, the U.S. Uh, are the leaders uh, in um, beef supplies uh, of premium uh, uh, sorts um, and types, uh, and uh, they are doing the best uh, and the most expensive and very high price beef. But uh, Americans them, uh, themselves, uh, they consume Canadian beef, uh, and uh, they bring a lot of uh, beef from neighboring Canada because it's just not premium and it is much cheaper and there is a um, consumption market and they open up this um, access but they themselves are focusing on uh, high uh, added value of premium products I think that's exactly what we should reflect on and set the, um, the target for us uh, um, and pursue similar policy in agricultural and uh, food markets to uh, maybe master very um, uh, deep and profound integration processes in uh, agricultural products uh, focusing on uh, very high uh, added value products. And that's exactly what we should start with in our integration into the global uh, food space. And uh, those are the parameters for our food safety. Thank you. Microphone. One question, please. Uh, my question is as follows. Um, uh, is there any statistics uh, on the use uh, of uh, locally made or partially local and foreign made uh, machine uh, building technologies um, in uh, processing um, phase and um, harvesting and collection of um, crops in our industry? Thank you. Uh, of course, we do have the statistics uh, in place, and uh, it, both Rostad and the Ministry of Agriculture, all do, we all do it. I don't have it at hand, but it's all in open access, and you can see, find it. But as for the processes and the way they uh, look, I mean, using local technology, we are growing. And currently, in a number of areas, we have um, uh, local technologies, uh, local um, uh, which uh, even we have a deficit for, and there were some cues uh, for it. Well, uh, until uh, the market had uh, dropped uh, this season, um, and um, uh, this agricultural market quite substantially so, um, uh, and this uh, sort of dropped the buying ability of the peasants, uh, and uh, they cannot massively buy the technology. But this season and last season also, we used to have uh, the mm, uh, six months queue for our tractor, the Kirovitz tractor. Well, of course, it's uh, uh, cheaper, quite powerful, and much cheaper than uh, the imported analogs, um, those which are um, um, produced um, uh, um, by the program of localization. That's a very powerful tractor, quite competitive, due to the fact that according to the technical parameters, it is comparable uh, to all those imported analogs uh, and much cheaper uh, in price. And the, the main issue in, uh, with our technology was, um, and the main question was to uh, provide servicing. Because uh, as for spare parts, um, uh, well, you had to wait for a week or a fortnight, and that means uh, um, demurrage for 
instance, if your um, machine uh, is broken uh, during the harvesting season and uh, then that uh, gives you huge losses incomparable with uh, your um, procurement prices. So that's why uh, they preferred foreign uh, technology because they did provide uh, servicing. Well, I, I mean, uh, better providing John Deere, for instance, guarantees uh, uh, one day supplies um, of their spare parts. And uh, we have, have to wait for a week uh, for our spare parts to arrive. That means losses, and that's uh, bad. And that was the main motivation to buy foreign or imported uh, technology. But this is being fixed now. And our uh, manufacturers are working hard at improving their servicing parameters, and this um, um, shifts the uh, uh, priorities uh, and um, uh, to um, local technology. And uh, the share is growing. The share of use uh, of uh, the use of locally made technology. Besides the fact that our manufacturers are exporting already. The second question. Microphone, please, for the questions. Uh, knowing uh, our interests and technologies, uh, I can't fail but ask a question. Uh, by 2018, there were plans uh, to introduce um, herbicides um, resistant uh, wheat. And according to the expectations and estimates, uh, the cost of um, wheat in the market will drop significantly because of herbicide uh, resistant wheat is uh, um, t two times uh, cheaper than the traditional one. How will it impact? our successes in um, grain sector, in um, uh, agriculture sector, I mean, uh, the successes we had, we've had after uh, the annexing. What do you think about that? Well, we do have this issue, and it's being discussed for a long time. And back in 2015, for instance, uh, in um, uh, the, um, uh, the, there was a program um, to change, um, um, set up by the government to uh, s uh, to change the image because uh, they were targeting uh, self-supplying of wheat, and that wa that's what exactly uh, they were um, thinking about um, and targeting about. It's um, um, uh, rust resistant, and th that's exactly what they would like to do. I mean, uh, the GM uh, MO uh, wheat uh, was uh, pretty used back uh, the first um, batch, uh, the f first uh, sorts, herbicide resistant. It's a long story because um, uh, they were created back in the 90s, but was not uh, uh, let into the market because the control over the dissemination from the point of view of all those copyright uh, uh, protection, well, possibly, uh, well, it's impossible, next to impossible, actually. That's why the manufacturers uh, themselves uh, limited uh, this access. I think that maybe in uh, um, in, um, time will go by and uh, it will come in because there, there are some hybrid weeds and some other sorts that do exist in the market. And from the point of view of competitiveness parameter, there's one subtle thing. Well, because actually we have the most competitive uh, wheat in, in the world. But our competitiveness uh, is eaten up uh, or erased uh, here in our territory. I mean, from the point of view of production um, um, indicators, uh, we are the most competitive, uh, lower than the cost. No other manufacturer in the world uh, can brag it. Uh, though we are not leading in production, we are leading in international supplies. But China is the, is, uh, the greatest uh, um, producer of wheat but uh, of not exactly mm, the same type. But they they lack uh, wheat for their uh, domestic uh, um, consumption. So as for uh, the um, genetically modified, uh, those are that are planned in the Canada, States, and China, I don't think that we are going to lose uh, uh, on our production competitiveness. The other question is um, how well will we be able to position internationally um, because uh, um, our competitiveness is uh, eaten up um, um, in the process of uh, supply. We are, um, our railway is much more expensive for transporting and rehandling in ports is uh, more expensive. It is 1.5 times higher than, for instance, in Rwanda or in uh, the Mexican Gulf. 
and uh, so on and so forth. And we certify and we issue documents uh, which is much more expensive than our competitors do. And we have additional risks. Um, and those are the things that eat up our competitiveness. We have huge reserves in this respect. And if uh, we manage to um, decline uh, the cost of all those procedures and save on uh, administrative barriers, um, and thus our supplies uh, uh, will protect our competitiveness, um, uh, not, exa not even um, getting over to the uh, genetically modified, and we'll stay the leaders. If we fail to do it, of course, we will have no other way than to um, start planting this uh, genetically modified. Okay, let's um, keep our leadership position and um, uh, be sure of our uh, leadership position. Thank you very much. Uh, very good. Then next uh, we will have we'll give the floor to Anatoly. It's um, it's uh, um, discussion we would like to. Uh, touch upon um, uh, whether uh, such questions, if if it makes sense to support uh, sm uh, SME business and in which industries, and then try to reflect on the role of foreign joint ventures um, to saturate the local market uh, and their role in uh, the export of products, and how to find the balance of interest um, using, uh, um, uh, for instance, um, examples of European um, community. And I think that uh, the editor in chief of um, Agri Investor uh, magazine um, will help us. Um, uh, you will, uh, you are given uh, this place at the captain's uh, bridge. Okay, thank you very much, Anatoly. Well, of course, it's an uh, interesting question. Uh, I agreed to moderate the second part of it. Thank you very much to the organizers of the Gaidai Forum for this opportunity to become uh, the moderator. Uh, um, in uh, this discussion in the, at the forum of the agri um, sector. Well, again, a very interesting question I would repeat. And me, not only as a moderator, but as a journalist, it would be interesting to hear our speakers because the role of foreign and joint ventures uh, is extremely low. For instance, foreign investors cover only 1% of uh, agricultural investments. And we realize with all the importance of foreign capital, that's practically nothing. And and uh, our main investor is the state, of course, uh, which covers, um, according to the preliminary 2017 uh, performance, 49% um, of all the investment um, loans invested last year into agriculture. In 2016, well, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, uh, 2016, uh, the indicator was 26% of investment loans. Uh, um, invested by the government. Now it's almost uh, a half. Uh, so the uh, foreign investor is not the main part of our agribusiness, but nevertheless, it is important and it is well needed in the transfer of technology and international competences uh, and sorts of hybrids um, and uh, the new uh, technological platforms and technology, uh, which were mentioned at the beginning. And I think this subject, um, this topic uh, will be offered by our speakers to discuss. And I think that uh, everybody um, uh, of them and um, me, I, I would use the list I have um, from here the, um, by the names. And I would like to give the floor to Ilshat Fazakmanov, who is uh, the Deputy Prime Minister of uh, Bashkortostan, and he is in charge of uh, Minsil House of uh, the region, uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture. Well, thank you very much. The second and first part are uh, combined. Uh, whether the uh, whether Russia will um, uh, compete, will um, go to the international market with whom? With our holding, uh, with our farms, uh, uh, those who date back to the Soviet Union and those from uh, 1990. Well, talking uh, Sunday with one of the effective uh, farmers in one of uh, the regions, uh, and we talked uh, with him, and he uh, said that last year in Bashkiria, uh, I had a record, historical record, um, 
um, eight uh, uh, centers for, from hectare of wheat. Uh, six and twenty-five centers was a, a hero of um, uh, the socialist labor back in the Soviet Union, and I was um, expecting an order of socialist labor. And uh, what I did get was uh, the uh, file, um, the suit file um, uh, from the court. Uh, so um, many of our peasants will um, go bankrupt uh, because uh, the this year was the best in the decade, but um, uh, the revenue, uh, the yield uh, was the worst. But among our peasants, um, that was uh, the best year. Uh, 2018 is not expected, um, uh, is not expecting higher prices uh, for feedstock as for safety. In the recent couple of years, Bashkortostan, um, and we are talking about uh, food safety, we are overproducing the main types uh, of our feedstock, which is grain, sunflower flour, oil, uh, sugar, meat, and um, um, uh, pork, um, but we are mostly overproducing feedstock. And uh, for you to understand, we analyze the republic, and every day uh, the population of the republic buy one billion of uh, food products. Um, it's uh, 360 almost um, for uh, um, for their food products, 80 for food, 80 for, uh, and 200 billion of uh, food products are brought from other regions. So food safety, well, I don't think we have achieved it. I don't know. Maybe we haven't. Well, of course, it does make sense to support them because the main mass is just uh, small farmers, uh, small farms and uh, SME business, uh, former collective farms. Um, and we are launching this year uh, a powerful product, uh, a powerful program, uh, cooperatives, not just uh, similar to collective farms uh, when you had to contribute your um, property and you, uh, uh, could, uh, you could not exit it. We just um, uh, get them united and we have 818 agricultural villages and out of them where we don't have already uh, no holdings, um, the, uh, we have only 316 economically active and that's where we are going to support uh, um, revenue generating. Yes, when they say yes, of course, we are producing milk and uh, then we say, okay, if um, you, we give them three million from the budget and they um, get together to set up uh, um, a milk farm and uh, a mini laboratory to increase the yield of uh, their um, smaller peasants um, and peasants farms and uh, and how uh, could they come into our bigger cities and towns and that's exactly where we would like to support them um, I talked to uh, KPMG and the Moscow Fair this morning and that's exactly what we're going to integrate the main thought here is that we should have a balance between the holding and smaller companies because smaller companies cannot survive on their own because we are sort of, of course, supporting them with uh, um, our budget, but that's not very effective. Uh, so that's exactly where the competition um, uh, rises. And But uh, our target is uh, the table of our cons uh, consumers, um, how to get from uh, the cow uh, down to the uh, branded shelf. For instance, in Ufa, we have one million of population. Every one of them uh, belong to a mun municipality. And uh, for instance, if I use to live in my parents lived in one district and I if I uh, see a product um, that gen uh, that originated from there of course I would buy it so our uh, objective of uh, the ministry to um, come up to the Russian and international market after we have cleared up our own um, market and what are the products uh, you can bring um, uh, you can export um, for instance maybe starting from uh, them near abroad maybe former uh, Soviet uh, republics and uh, um, down to uh, other macro regions and um, ATP regions. And Bashkortostan, yes, it's all clear that um, uh, you and uh, uh, just any um, uh, any one of you, you might buy it because uh, you know it. And how would you uh, go out to um, the international markets, to external markets? Do you have such products uh, to go with? Well, first of all, the Bashkortostan, uh, well, it dates back to the Soviet Union and um, we don't have it in any 
any new type. We, well, we um, uh, we don't have laboratories in place. We have a lot of cheap antibiotics. Just uh, last um, week, uh, the Saudi Arabia returned us 10 tons. So uh, with uh, Bashkir products, we will uh, go internationally. But halal is uh, the second uh, thing because we are a Muslim republic, and uh, uh, Bashkir was uh, the first one who uh, rec- uh, who recognized uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And when they uh, when we meet the king, he always said, "Okay, everything from your republic because we do have this product according to all the rules." That's our um, competitiveness and our. Uh, and to have you calculated the economics of those supplies because you, uh, from the very beginning, said that, and Arkadi before you also was saying that we are leading in volumes, but unfortunately we are losing in uh, economics, and everybody thinks that that's a very cool topic and very fashionable now to discuss, but I haven't heard from anyone yet um, of uh, any justified calculations uh, that it might be very uh, profitable to the business. For instance, when you produce something to somewhere, okay, uh, okay how well, it's in, especially in the Saudi Arabian market, you will have so many competitors who are much more experienced and much bigger, and their quality is not worse than yours. Have you calculated all those things? Can it be profitable? Uh, are there any real chances for Bashkir products uh, to be supplied to Saudi Arabia? Well, we are working at it. Uh, we did um, calculate uh, uh, the exports of uh, honey. We export now to Canada, Germany, Austria, and uh, interest Interestingly, uh, if we go with our honey to Germany, 120 ki- um, rubles per kilo, and they have uh, 700 on their shelves, and our domestic price is 400. How can I uh, convince um, our um, bee producers uh, to do it if it is 120 and we are working with the, the Germans, not uh, with 120? We have to have minimum 400, but of course we can increase the volumes, and we need the uh, public support, the state support, and we will will use it to help to implement the product. Um, uh, so we, you mean you you would like to have this uh, state support? Yes, of course. Um, but uh, well, if uh, we launch this system and if we support it um, uh, with the state, well, uh, if uh, we fail, then we'll stay at home. Arkady, your comment? OK, so my comment. We are a little bit uh, uh, mistaken about uh, the prospects of the market when we see uh, that the food export is more profitable uh, as opposed to internal suppliers. No, it's not the case uh, in comparison to other markets. So almost uh, all the time, export uh, is what you need to do not to spoil your internal market. So we see that, that trend in the poultry um uh, segment where we have some excessive uh, products so this uh, extra products are sold in the uh, external markets just to compensate uh, for uh, for the situation in the domestic market do we have any questions to start father Rahmanov? yes please well please wait for the microphone because uh, otherwise uh, not everyone in the audience will be able to see you Alfia Kuznetsova from Bashkortostan State uh, Agricultural University. And I would like to support uh, Il Shat regarding the question you asked regarding profitability. Well, you know, in the animal breeding, um, the main share of the prime cost uh, has to do with the uh, fodder, and the purchasing prices were very low in our regions. Uh, f- in the recent uh, 27 years, our uh, region has been the leader in terms of the bovine, cattle, and uh, vegetable, but the state support. Um, is not the same. It's not possible to just deplete all the resources from the region without anything coming back. Uh, for the outcomes of 2017 shows that in Belgorod region, it got 14% of all investment uh, from the federal budget. So the Republic of uh, Bashkortostan got just 3.2%. And I can give you much more examples to illustrate. So resources, uh, you cannot uh, use uh, 
resources of the rural areas uh, forever. Well, I realize I realize that uh, you're not happy uh, for getting less uh, subsidies uh, than the Belgrade region. But I would like to remind you that uh, uh, before, from 1994, Belgrade region has been investing much in the ag agricultural center. When no one else believed uh, in the prospects. Okay. At the moment, I would like to give the floor to the head of the Agroter Integrating, Alexander Dachinko. No, Dachenko. Sorry, sorry. Uh, or Dachinko. Okay. I would like to avoid uh, misprint. So, Agroterra is one of the major agribusiness holdings in Russia, and according to estimates uh, uh, given in our magazine, so it's uh, among the largest uh, producers of agribusiness uh, products. So it controls over 3,000 uh, hectares of agricultural land. Thank you so very much for this chance uh, to speak before you. So, and I would like to present a real business case from you. So the project uh, we are currently focused on. So briefly, some words about uh, Agroterra company. So we have uh, more than um, 30 to enterprises, million point, uh, uh, 1.2 million tons of what we produce. Uh, so the main species we produce include wheat, uh, soybean, rape, sugar beet, and we are among the top three companies uh, producing soybean in central Russia. Uh, last year, or to be more precise, by the end of uh, 2016, we be we launched integrated project. So the main goal of the project is to include small farms and small enterprises in our supply chain to improve sustainability and financial outputs for the small agribusiness. According to the Ministry of Agriculture, about one third of land is being um, cultivated by small uh, farming companies, uh, so which translates into 22 million hectares, which is quite a lot. And also for uh, benefits in uh, state loans, uh, so they made just slightly over 5% last year. And uh, of course, there is uh, uh, much demand for financing, which is even higher uh, than for uh, large uh, agri companies. So, as Arkady said, uh, the agricultural industry showed uh, a steady growth in recent years in terms of productions, but small uh, farms are more prone to negative influences like uh, drops in prices, which we had earlier this year, and uh, the weather impact. And of course, they don't feel as comfortable as major players in the market. So, uh, the way small um, agricultural companies uh, work in the world. So we studied some uh, best practices and we noted the trend when uh, small companies uh, unite into cooperatives or they unite with large agricultural companies to improve sustainability and uh, the degree of independence. So, and our project integrator focuses on uh, these points. What uh, uh, can it give to small agricultural companies? How can they benefit from it? So, first of all, funding. Lack of funding should uh, be compensated for. And we, as a large holding, as part of this uh, integrated project, we provide a commercial financing. And we feel much more comfortable than a bank, which provides loans to the companies. Because we are insiders, we know the ins and outs. We can evaluate uh, the risks uh, realistically. We understand where the risks are 
uh, exaggerated, and we can evaluate uh, the economics of a small company which works uh, in the same market. And uh, the advanced technologies are not just mere words. So we offer trainings and seminars to small companies. We invite them to our fields. Uh, we have the uh, in the field days. We show them technologies, uh, how they work, uh, the machinery. We invite speakers which uh, cover the new trends in the market. And we allow them to talk to our agronomists and technologists to learn some details uh, about our developments in recent years, about our experience we gained as part of our work. And what's important as well, to develop uh, small uh, agribusiness companies, we can provide some land to them. And I haven't heard about uh, a similar opportunity like this in Russia for small farming enterprises. Okay, so it's something slightly different. And we are ready to provide small farmers uh, with land plots uh, if uh, they can offer certain technologies. And of course, uh, we share our expertise in terms of uh, quality management in the entire supply chain of the entire quality throughout the entire process from input, from getting seeds till supplying the end product uh, to the customer's place. So what were the results uh, of the project's uh, first year? So in recent year, uh, 71 farmers became our partners. So these uh, farmers were on about 120,000 hectares. The project has huge uh, um, potential for upscaling and growth, and uh, we can evaluate it uh, based on feedback we got from our partners. And uh, reviewing dynamics and demand for this partnership model, we believe that by uh, 2022, our partners will work on um, at least uh, 1 million hectares of land. Uh, and I think this is a serious figure. And uh, the main thing is that the partnership is uh, beneficial for all. So our partners uh, get resources, advanced technologies, access to our supply chain. And uh, they are confident about their own sustainability. So what about our company? So we are confident that we will get a growth in our supply volume. So for the state, the state can benefit from the exporting potential and development of the rural areas because all people, uh, farmers hire, uh, they in most cases live in the same areas. So, and this is a contribution into organic development of the rural areas. So, uh, in what um, will provide for an extra impetus for the growth of the entire industry? Uh, there are a lot of things uh, which can contribute, but in our mind, there are two key directions, two key areas state support uh, public uh, products on upgrading the infrastructure. And I would like to put a specific emphasis on the elevator infrastructure. And also the expanding uh, benefits in public loans. So if the state and the small agricultural uh, companies can join their efforts that would improve uh, access to innovative technologies, exporting potential, and uh, the food securities of the country at the end of the day. Uh, I'm finished. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Your questions, please. Have the microphone. Yeah. Could I please have the microphone? Yeah, a uh, brief question, and I would expect a brief function. So please let us know, what's the uh, profitability of a farm which cooperates 
with your companies and what are the conditions? Do you dictate to them what are the production conditions, what species they should be focused on? Are they three in their choice? No, that's not right. They are absolutely th free. I told you about 71 uh, farmers which uh, became our partners. Uh, well, actually, there were more um, applicants, but we couldn't uh, accept them all. And secondly, we did not limit them by a set of species. So the farmer is free in economical terms. So they come to us and they tell us, well, please uh, teach us how to do this, and we will advise them on what uh, species are profitable. We see that uh, in the next three to five years, it will remain equally profitable. And we say, we are ready to support you with buying these species. So they are mm, absolutely free economically in their choice. Uh, one point to clarify. Uh, it appears to me that uh, our guest, our delegate, meant that farmers which are integrated in your uh, project are using your technological platform uh, in terms of uh, cedar uh, and uh, seeding rooting stock uh, supply, not just uh, buying potato or cucumbers. So they are part of your technological cloud, right? No, not for all the cultures and species. Uh, to put it briefly, they, they don't have uh, any strict limitations. We give them recommendations and we tell them, in case uh, you follow our good lines, uh, you will get the quality, uh, which would be uh, enough for us to buy from you. Otherwise, you will have to sell it in the outer market. And it's the farmer's interest uh, to observe the requirements. So uh, does uh, the farm have uh, obligations to sell the products to you? Well, in most cases, it would be more profitable for them to sell us rather than to somebody in the outer market. Well, uh, if the farmer gets a higher price uh, from the outer market, so uh, he's not obliged to sell to us. Uh, thank you. More questions. Uh, Nikolai, uh, I believe that uh, everywhere, everyone in this room uh, are impartial to farmers and uh, they, they love farmers. But uh, please uh, keep closer to the topic of our today's discussion. So, yeah, the subject, the subject of our meeting here. I believe it's, it remains the same. I don't see any major deviation from our agenda. Okay, uh, but let's uh, give the floor to somebody from the regions. Denis Cherkesov from the Ministry of Agriculture of Ivanova region. So, Denis, uh, you have a presentation on the regional development of the agriculture. And I hope you don't just cover farmers and you don't go too far away from our main topic of the day. Yeah, I will mainly focus on farmers, so dear colleagues, dear delegates to the forum, so the possibility of Russia to exit world market, it has to do with the volumes of production, so in many areas um, uh, we have uh, self enough volumes of self-production and we have more, we are getting more and more public support, so in, we had growth in three areas. So first of all, state support and uh, the output from the agriculture was uh, higher compared to other areas of production. So secondly, uh, let's talk about embargo. So even before embargo and sanctions, the agribusiness has been actively developed. And thirdly, we finally learned to build quickly, to build efficiently and to earn some money on the agribusiness. So that's from a growth in production, we move to a more challenging task, uh, on becoming exporting companies. And for exports, uh, you also need public support. And our funding is limited. And our budget cannot grow um, a number of times. So as funds are limited, we have a number of uh, questions on what areas should be priorities, what uh, sub-industries should be priorities, so whether agri-holdings or farmers should benefit. Uh, so as for the farmers, I would like to highlight uh, their case first. 
So, if you would look, uh, if you would compare farmers and agribusiness companies and agri holdings from 2008 to uh, 2016, uh, let's talk about uh, the cattle breeding, the livestock breeding. So, in agricultural companies in uh, eight years, the growth w was uh, 805,000 uh, tons, both for um, agri holdings and for farmers. But uh, the difference uh, per ton is 90, is 29 times. So uh, even if you analyze it at a quick uh, glance, uh, you can probably say it. So let's support uh, the agribusiness companies, the agri holders. However, this analysis is not uh, detailed. So let's uh, go into uh, details. Let's go back to production of all types of meat. And we have very rough um, competitions in uh, um, pork uh, breeding and in the poultry uh, business, farmers could still keep the same percentage from the total volume 3.3 in 2008, and it was 3.5 in 2016 for milk, for dairy produce. Uh, products, uh, farmers uh, grew by 60%, and uh, agricultural companies uh, grew only by for 5%, so they were more profitable. So as for beans, um, farmers... Uh, got the output of 110 uh, percent, and it was 1.5 uh, million tons uh, for um, agro holdings, or just two percent. Also for vegetables, it was uh, uh, plus 25 percent for agricultural uh, companies, and plus. Uh, uh, 35 uh, percent for farmers and you should note that for farmers the availability of loans uh, is scarce and you can analyze figures for long you can uh, go deeply um, into all areas of support but based on our experience uh, work at the regional and federal level and also given my experience as a public employee and a head of uh, uh, an association for, for, for farmers. Farmers is a big uh, driver for the economy. Uh, but I would like to draw your attention to the following, that our farmers um, are not exactly that we uh, imagine in the majority of cases uh, about uh, a farm, I want to think about, uh, think about a family farm. And I think that uh, the majority imagine those who visited abroad or watch TV, there's a family farm with a family on it and the business uh, which is inherited. But actually, in Russia, it is not exactly the case because there are very few such farms. Um, uh, um, there was the first wave uh, back in the 90s when the farmers um, uh, became those who uh, had come from uh, the collective farmers. Mostly they were the heads and directors uh, of those farms. Uh, and uh, in the majority of the cases, they are very powerful and uh, major with uh, several thousands of hectares in Altai region, for instance. Those who still um, are there are the most effective, uh, one of the most effective farmers, uh, farms um, the second wave uh, was uh, those who were getting from their personal farms in the recent decade or 15 years because of uh, state support and because uh, the uh, trade rules and trade production rules uh, toughened. And the, sec uh, and the third wave, which is uh, underway currently, which is growing, those are the investors with small capital. Uh, they get together with um, agricultural specialists and experts. Uh, for instance, I have money, but I don't know how to do it. You know how to do it, but you don't have money. With the account of uh, the uh, form of these uh, uh, farms, allow them to start uh, with a small volume to um, get state support from the very beginning. That's why this form is actively used by smaller investors. So despite uh, this um, uh, heterog uh, heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneous uh, character, we can see that in agriculture, uh, qualification and responsibility of farmers uh, uh, are very high. And I can uh, 
quote a lot of examples that uh, the performance uh, that farmers are showing with all equal um, conditions, with accessibility of technology and techniques and um, a high productive uh, seeds and uh, cattle uh, breeders, th their efficiency is much higher than uh, many holdings. And the farms are the main source of uh, staff um, for agriculture. And let's uh, reflect on um, what uh, our main uh, human resources uh, problem. Very often they say that uh, zoological uh, technicians and agronomes, uh, agronomists um, uh, are lacking, uh, but mostly in the bigger farms uh, uh, they find them uh, quite fast and they have good teams, even in those farms who seem to be almost bankrupt. Uh, but a new director comes in, sets up a team, and the main human resource problem here is the lack of high quality directors or managers and purely statistically because every um, director or manager of uh, a farm is a mini company or a major company and every manager uh, can either grow himself uh, in the future into a bigger farm or become uh, the manager of a bigger um, farm with uh, an owner so that's a uh, human resources school of uh, managers of executives uh, in agriculture. So statistically, the farms, um, uh, there are tens of thousands, but uh, there are thousands of uh, agricultural um, smaller farms. That's uh, why that's the cluster we can uh, have um, this uh, very important um, human resources um, potential uh, for the future and um, ineffective and um, uh, in, uh, farms. And I would like to ask you maybe a, a difficult question. Who believes leaves into bright future and sustainable development of the existing major agro holdings. Uh, uh, allow me to interrupt. Let's vote. Who does believe into this thing? Please raise your hands if you believe it. Those uh, who believe into stay sustainable and cloudless um, development. I mean, in Russia, I mean, the bright future of our uh, major uh, agro holdings in Russia. Well, as for smaller, well, uh, taking into account the fact that the existing agri holdings um, uh, meet term, they exist, well, uh, for 10 uh, years or maybe 20 or 30, they have grown very fast, but their success stories, well, of course, there are 15 and 20 years of success stories. Do you mean short term or longer term, whether the Russian holdings uh, survive, will survive? I will clarify whether uh, Russian agri holding, uh, holdings uh, will survive a longer term. Please raise your hands if you think that, yes, they will. Those who don't, please raise your hand. Thank you. So, of course, um, I mean, what I mean is um, uh, that agri holdings uh, will see the process of bankruptcy, replace some farms replacing uh, some others, and farmers replacing each other. Whether the farmers are resources for export directly, no. Of course, they will not uh, become exporters. But let's look at who the main exporters are uh, in Russia and um, the Western Europe before the embargo. Uh, bigger um, um, cooperatives, uh, value, and the, the like. So that's our huge potential for export. Um, well, please pay your attention to another trend. The countries uh, that are actively exporting, I mean, developed countries, and we are striving for it, and we have to, and we must develop, and we do have this trend in place. So the po population of those countries does not want to, to have unified um, um, uh, products uh, from uh, giant uh, processors. They would like uh, tailor-made individual products from smaller farmers. And please pay attention to the fact that how often now they use this uh, phrase, uh, farmer's products, um, uh, products from farmers, and so on and so forth. Uh, this um, word, uh, the farm and farmers, um, is uh, very much used in, the, uh, in trade in Moscow and St. Petersburg and other bigger cities and even smaller towns of Russia. That's uh, actively developing and being promoted. 
But I would like to say another thing uh, that farmers, and I would repeat it, uh, that farmers are the driving force uh, and uh, the performance in the numbers indicators showing it. And um, they are the main uh, drivers and they are uh, the main assistant and the sh social development of uh, the, um, and, uh, of um, villages. And I'm sure that any manager or director of a district or agricultural region developing their own village um, uh, uh, they are interested, and smaller farms, uh, they pay much more attention to that uh, uh, because for agri-holding, uh, they uh, are interested in uh, the point of uh, production because they can bring uh, the workers, in the majority of cases, uh, they are not engaged in social uh, aspects. Uh, and in conclusion, allow me to speak about uh, the uh, areas of agriculture to support. Uh, indeed, um, uh, there is a budget deficit and budget constraint, and we cannot um, uh, scan um, uh, squander the resources and we have to give more to some types um, and that's absolutely right Sergey was saying about that that uh, there's a, a huge um, area of uh, production we have to pay uh, special attention to but taking into account our huge uh, uh, land and water resources and taking into account our activity of our population I mean and in agriculture exactly I think that we should support all areas and all um, uh, directions in many industries even uh, when the governors uh, stress that uh, they do support uh, um, poultry or dairy production or uh, and where they are really active uh, practically all areas are well developing for instance in Kaluga region they are producing shrimp even and around us uh, there's a huge global market out there and we will export uh, uh, what we will produce more than um, uh, we uh, will would eat um, but surprisingly well who uh, could think that we would export ice cream or that our toothpaste uh, would uh, conquer not only the neighboring uh, CIS market, but also in China, will be actively present in the market of China in huge uh, numbers. And I think that we should support all areas, but we should um, balance the support and disseminate it and, um, and maybe prioritize the support. But our um, capabilities and our potential in agricultural uh, production is huge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Indeed, in the Ivanova region, uh, there there might uh, make sense to develop uh, smaller um, farms uh, as a priority um, uh, because uh, historically they didn't have, they've never had uh, um, layer of uh, uh, big agro holdings. And uh, of course, uh, the basis is of uh, that region is not the most agrarian, by the way. Exactly those are the forms. Uh, questions, if, we, uh, if you want. We have an opportunity for a couple of questions. Please wait for uh, a mic to arrive. My name is Vasily. I'm from Nizhny Novgorod. I'm director. We are small, innovative um, 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 processing, biomass processing, uh, forestry, uh, uh, and we are cooperating and working with 30 farms of the Ivan region and thankful very much to their support because they're very interesting and they take care um, very much. And as for the smaller um, companies, um, well, I think that we should not uh, uh, interfere because last year, for instance, uh, we um, acquired seven patents um, and uh, 400 uh, published in Scopus. Uh, we have more than 500 companies. The northern part is Arhangelsk and uh, the southern is um, Ossetia. And, um, uh, from, uh, and I had some information from uh, the Kuban uh, using our additives. Uh, they um, uh, stirred up um, uh, the sturgeon so much that uh, there's so much of it now. And uh, we are very happy for your fish. And I'm sure we will uh, streamline cooperation with the Ivanova um, farmers. Um, well, yes, there is a question from there. Uh, please grab a mic. Uh, uh, I, um, I wouldn't introduce. Um, well, maybe I, you would. I'm, 
Uh, I think that uh, we are discussing a lot uh, the issues of human resources, but we forget a very important thing here that was mentioned at the previous panel, and it's um, uh, well very interesting trend. Trend um, uh, don't interfere. And German Graf also at the previous panel mentioned that there's another aspect, very serious, which is very much beyond agriculture because agriculture is becoming high uh, tech industry, and after banking, I would put agriculture as number two by the degree of uh, integration of uh, planning in um, the crop rotation and the systems that should be based on the data. And in uh, the conditions of the digital economies, we should be capable uh, to uh, to uh, to support, to, and we are discussing things that are so far from uh, the trends in the world, and I think that we might wake up in uh, one morning and uh, will, um, and you will have uh, um, a container with uh, uh, vegetables, and you would say, well, seemingly we haven't um, uh, acquired an access to the markets. So my question is how much we should uh, pay attention to the technological factor um, to introduce uh, those aspects and uh, to combine um, applied technologies and human resources from the point of view of uh, uh, managing um, uh, and uh, not uh, uh, very separate and specific technologies. How uh, critical do you think this aspect is today? And what are the ways out, uh, the way you see it? Because from my perspective, the situation is a plight uh, in the context of uh, the, uh, the world and Russia. Thank you very much, Alexei. Um, whom did you ask your question uh, to? Well, just anyone. Mm, well, uh, allow me to try. Maybe my colleague will join in. Well, indeed, uh, we should pay special attention to that. And with state support available, I would never support at the federal level uh, a project uh, to, cons to build uh, um, uh, with a line uh, milking um, dairy farm because we won't even attract young specialists. Same can be said about other areas. Because maybe uh, it's not always that we have money for super modern things like uh, robotics or hydroponics um, or no, the like. Uh, but uh, to restrict the old technology is something we really can do. I can. Uh, I would uh, disagree because the reason is very simple. We possibly, as yes, maybe we were not the first uh, to digitalize um, uh, from uh, the sectors of economy, but we are leading in uh, the rates uh, of. Um, um, uh, digitalization. That's exactly true. And just to provide you fresh data, and I was thinking about uh, buying a drone, and I needed it for shooting because I'm doing it. And I started to look around, and the major, uh, the biggest information I got was from my peasants uh, who are seeding. They, they all have drones. All of them. They have mastered them. They are using drones uh, all around, and they provide me with uh, the biggest uh, uh, information. Uh, allow me to join in, Arkady, uh, that um, don't uh, try to underestimate us, because actually life uh, makes us uh, uh, to do things uh, um, other people can't even imagine, because if you want to survive and earn, you will have to use modern technologies. For instance, uh, my example and Arkady's uh, example was greenhouse um, um, complexes. Uh, you know, the Dutch come down to learn how we do it, to introduce new technologies, because in Holland, they don't have this kind of complexes. Whatever is being developed, uh, they test it, and right away they get it, and it is 150, 170 kilo per one square meter of, of uh, crop uh, with 30 all over Russia. Average is uh, 30. Modern is 150, 170. So colleagues, um, the economics and the competition we are in, I mean the global one, makes us um, uh, to uh, go there to uh, learn, and many uh, even have invented things here. So I don't think that there are any risks for us of the kind, because we are running fast and we're going to run further on. So allow me. Uh, well, I uh, please come to Ufa in uh, March this year because uh, we are going to discuss digitalization and a lot of things. 
because last year we the, were the first um, to subsidize uh, 2.5 million rubles uh, um, of companies uh, which are introducing such things. We have about 60 companies who have uh, bought uh, digitalized things, and we are starting the assembly of um, milking robots. Uh, uh, and that, those are smaller farms uh, with uh, no human involvement, only engineers through Android uh, involved in that. So don't uh, underestimate us. The last question, please. The lady from here. Thank you very much, um, um, uh, Russia OECD. Um, uh, Maria, my name is Maria. My question is, uh, OECD, since 1960s or 50s or 60s, um, been pursuing policy to certify internationally of seeds and tractors and fruit, vegetables, and some separate systems available, and also forestry products. I don't know whom to ask this question, but uh, as to what uh, do you know about that um, in Russia? I know that Russia has uh, joined in um, uh, in some codes of, uh, I mean, and beans and other seeds and tractors, um, but actually this system is um, not uh, um, active now. What's your attitude to international standards? Do you have any plans uh, to exceed to, or maybe you set up some centers of certification for Russian producers uh, based on uh, international standards uh, to get certified to export their products without um, certifying their products abroad? Okay, some of the speakers, you're welcome. Uh, well, um, we are in um, in the Eurasian uh, space, and uh, the technical procedures uh, uh, developed in the framework of OEC OECD and approved there. They are unified, and with many technical Euro um, technical procedures with European unions uh, there, and uh, partially uh, it is um, uh, being done uh, in the framework of international rules. Maybe some can uh, add. Well, that's not true. Uh, allow me to somehow provide you a picture. Well, the standards are voluntary, 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 and um, Codex Alimentarius is not mandatory in any country, and we are mm, uh, using this Codex uh, Alimentarius. Uh, but in the system of certification, in some types of products, for instance, organic products, um, produce, uh, uh, they are, th that's the norm for branding. You are not entitled to brand your organic products if you are not certified like that, like they did in Germany, like bioproducts or some other systems, uh, Echo and whatever uh, brands they use. Our system of mand mandatory system is not exactly um, there. Uh, and um, it's um, um, still being uh, worked at, and there are a lot of disputes underway. From the point of view of a system of certification, voluntary systems, we are very actively um, certifying, uh, and we have a lot of uh, um, accredited systems, uh, those who are involved in certification of ISO 9000 and some other systems, um, or management certification, but um, uh, we have uh, a big issue, and at some point, point I was um, uh, engaged in uh, management certification, and we decided to do it for processing industries to have it here, and we faced an um, uh, uh, insurmountable problem because those certifications that exist in the world and in Europe to guarantee. Uh, the um, appraisal of processes of uh, production in the framework of description of the system of uh, quality and management. Um, as applied to adjustment of um, quality control and management, uh, which uh, uh, have been identified um, as reference points for the customer. So we found out that they are very costly. So the cost of obtaining one certificate uh, according to the system existing in Europe uh, so is about uh, 200,000 uh, US dollars. So in our case, we tried to reduce this cost down to 200,000 rubles. And we have uh, the certification uh, institutions which are certified in Russia. So the problem um, 
um, for, for them was to describe uh, these reference points. And uh, just uh, none of the companies uh, was successful. And to hire uh, spe specialists uh, to do this, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, the cost is uh, $200,000. And we have a lot of specialists, but all certificates uh, they provide a fake. You have uh, no certificate uh, confirming um, quality of products in Russia, uh, with the exception of Western certificates. So this is the problem we are facing. Thank you, Arkady. So let's continue. Uh, and we have not so much time left. But, uh, I would like to give the floor to Oleg Ovchinikov, the head of uh, agrarian uh, problems uh, uh, in the Institute of uh, the United States of America and Canada in the Russian Academy of Science. Uh, so please uh, put the slides on. So, dear moderators, uh, panelists, and guests, let me share with you my opinion on the topics of our discussions, item one through four. And I would like to draw some parallels with the agricultural sector of the U.S., uh, as I'm focused on it. What are the real successes of the Russian agribusiness, and what are its uh, downsides? So if you would analyze dynamics, there are some successes. So in Table 1, you see the change in agricultural production in Russia from year 2000 till 2016. Well, um, the dynamics looks uh, flawless as it appears. However, there is a fly in the ointment of these optimistic statistics. So this fly in the ointment number one, if you would expand this pen uh, down to 1990, you will see that uh, the trend is not that optimistic. Let's uh, have a look at uh, table number two. And you will see that uh, for some performance indicators, we have not reached the level of uh, 30 years uh, ago, uh, especially for meat and dairy products and milk. And also, uh, how accurate uh, these uh, estimates by Rostat are. If you, let's look at table number three, uh, you will see the share of uh, certain uh, segments and you will see the percentage of uh, populations and the mm, growth speeds. If you look at abandoned uh, uh, villages and abandoned uh, uh, land plots, um, you will realize that the young people are not willing to work on the land. So, and I would not uh, suggest there is an exaggeration, but I think that uh, um, figures are boosted for some types of products. And uh, uh, the volumes of productions uh, are further away from the level of 1990. So. May, some might say that stagnation uh, in production could be typical for other countries. So let's compare our figures with the production per capita in the United States of America. You see the benchmarking analysis in uh, Table 4. So uh, the population in Russia shrunk uh, by 1%, and in um, the States it grew nearly by uh, 30%. So production per capita in Russia grew by 16%, while in the States it grew by 31%, given uh, notable growth of the population. And so for mm, some products like uh, uh, eggs, uh, we are still below the level of 1990, also for dairy products and for meat. And uh, we don't have uh, mm, that category uh, in the States like uh, farms run by population. 
Uh, if you look into the dynamics, uh, the trends in recent years, you will see that uh, the growth is uh, slowing down. So among the reasons is the stagnation of internal demand. So the impoverished uh, populations cannot uh, purchase uh, much of the products. Also, the state regulation of the agri cultural sector is imperfect. You will see that uh, the development is skewed. Have a look at the organizational structure of the American agricultural sector. So that's uh, table five. We should note that in nearly 30 recent years, the number of farms in the states is stable. It's about $2.5 million. And uh, larger farming enterprises produce uh, more than 50 uh, percent of the volume, and uh, the share of uh, small enterprises is only about 12 percent. So, um, 85 percent of uh, smaller farms, so they are subsidized uh, by their owners, so in the rightmost uh, column, but uh, the profit is above uh, 100%. And uh, so yes, they are subsidized by the owners, and you have 1.9 million farms like this. But there is enough uh, room for everyone, So and there are smaller farms which are not profitable, but they can exist together with the larger agribusiness companies, and they can benefit from the state uh, subsidies. Have a look at Table 7. You see how the state support is distributed between the smaller farms and medium farms. Uh, so small farms account for nearly 90% uh, in terms of uh, quantity and 25% uh, uh, in terms of uh, production volume, and uh, the medium-sized uh, farms uh, uh, get uh, around uh, one-third of support. So why uh, Americans, uh, a business-like uh, nation, would support uh, smaller farms? Uh, one of the answers is that American legislators understand that apart from production as well, you have rural areas with all its social and economical uh, infrastructure, so where the American nation is rooted. This is the reality, and this reality is equally important as the production. And this is also respect for the choice of person. So farmers' uh, labor is hard, and the state must provide uh, such people with uh, certain conditions. So they have like uh, uh, subsidies for uh, startups in agricultural business. So, and our uh, public employees, uh, officials in the agri business, um, so they don't understand that psychology. They give the green light to the uh, major agricultural uh, holdings, ignoring the fact that uh, uh, the lack of support in smaller farms leads to a degradation in the rural areas. And it's no secret that. Uh, for uh, many, uh, instead of for uh, abandoned uh, villages of uh, today, uh, so we used to have uh, like uh, bustling settlements uh, 30 years ago. As for agricultural science, uh, the development of the agribusiness uh, today uh, directly depends on the innovations. So, and as for achievements of uh, today's agribusiness, mostly it's based on uh, uh, foreign developments because we this uh, continuous uh, lack of funding during the uh, period of uh, market reforms. Um, uh, on the diagram, you see the volume of uh, subsidies on agricultural science in the States. So it reached uh, 4 uh, billion US dollars uh, uh, among them. Uh, 12, uh, 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 12, 12 billions uh, were from the private sectors. And you see the volumes of how the 
research in the agricultural sector is uh, distributed by countries. I couldn't find uh, any specific figures for Russia. So this is the way how uh, the picture we get for 2013. Financing of agricultural research was accounted for uh, 9 billion US dollars in China, you, um, USA uh, 4 billion dollars and Russia 0.1 to 0.3 billion dollars. So no comments, as they say. So maybe agricultural business finances uh, science in Russia. Well, there are some programs, but they, the results are marginal. So what's the future of Russian agricultural sector? The answer is clear. It's a complete dependence on the foreign technologies and developments. OK, do you have any more questions to the so-called successes of uh, domestic uh, agriculture, uh, the quality of products. We heavily depend on the sanctions regime. So we already recalled uh, the barrel of ointment uh, with the flies. So um, it's better to feel the connection with the reality instead of being overly optimistic. And I would like to ask you a rhetoric questions: whether we can report any successes of Russian agribusiness. So, of course, we have no systemic uh, successes. We have only uh, optimistic rhetorics. Regarding the second questions uh, about supplies to the domestic market and exporting programs, uh, what you can do um, in the context of uh, decreasing uh, revenues of domestic uh, population. And so we shouldn't be um, confused. Uh, no one is waiting for us in the world market. If we w would like to become uh, a supplier of a low quality wheat at uh, dumped prices, so try to sell um, uh, frozen chicken in somewhere in Europe. It will hardly succeed because the world market is. Uh, highly competitive and uh, very much integrated. Nobody invites us to these uh, free economic zones. First of all, we need to saturate our domestic market. We have reserves um, which are huge and we need to work here. We need uh, three approaches, two from the world of uh, agribusiness and the third one is fiscal. The main measures are, just a second. So, first of all, we need to regulate the structure of uh, uh, agribusiness uh, production. Um, and I would like to give you an example. We still have the protein problem. Resolving the problem uh, would enable a breakthrough in the animal breeding. Um, uh, we will be less dependent on the imports from abroad and uh, the subsidies of soybean could uh, be favorable so many farms uh, would prefer growing soybeans instead of growing wheat for exports secondly we need uh, a program of uh, subsidies for uh, people in hard economic conditions so we started a similar program in 2014, but where uh, do we have the domestic programs of uh, food assistance or food support? Uh, they were transferred to another ministry. As for the fiscal policy, so most of uh, the population have uh, low income, so and uh, the fiscal policy is needed to encourage them. So, uh, Oleg, you have uh, just uh, two more minutes. Um, I'm nearly finished. Well, uh, two more items. Yeah, just uh, the essence, uh, the core thing. Okay. Uh, as for the agrarian policy, what are the strategic uh, solutions on changing regulations of the food market in the new reality? I am 
confident that the system of the state regulations in the agricultural sector of uh, Russia is far from being perfect. It should be completely changed. It's not about the content of the programs, which also uh, have to be changed, but it's about the main principles of how the agricultural policy is organized. So, and uh, how are they formulated? I would like to share them with you. They are based on the agrarian policy in the United States of America. And uh, we can identify uh, five core principles in regulating the agricultural sector. Uh, first of all, is the comprehensive uh, nature of the measures which should be focused on um, meeting the conditions for the food uh, security. Uh, the second principle is uh, the central character. It's all at the federal level. Um, the third point is the unique uh, role of the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, which is uh, actually running a unique research center at national level. Um, the fourth point is state-of-the-art uh, laws, and uh, the fifth point is uh, includes uh, technological tools. So the, neither of these conditions uh, is met in Russia. And the answer is that the agrarian policy in Russia uh, requires uh, reform. Uh, so I have more to say about the smaller uh, companies, about uh, farmers. Okay, um, I think we covered uh, a, uh, the topic of the smaller companies and farmers enough. So I think we only have uh, five to six minutes left. I would like to hear some comments, some feedback from the audience, some comments, some points. Yes. Uh, sorry, the question is out of the microphone. Uh, so, good uh, afternoon. I'm Mikhail Akim from ABB. So, it's been very exciting. So, we heard about the two uh, countries which are completely different, uh, which is uh, really interesting. So, and my question is, Arkady Zlachevsky said uh, that actually uh, the prime cost of uh, product uh, when it's produced uh, on site, it's slow, but uh, due to low efficiency of the entire supply chain, the transport handling and bureaucracy, as we heard, so it becomes uh, uh, not competitive. And we heard a colleague from Deloitte uh, who mentioned uh, the onset of the digital economy, but um, how we perceive the digital economy? IT technologies, IT technologies uh, which were adopted successfully, ERP and other systems, of course we have some advances here. But my question is that if you waste, if you lose a lot of efficiency, and not only at the stage of production, but also at the stage of uh, supply chain and handling. So what technologies are most uh, critical uh, to ensure that uh, the Russian agribusiness is uh, competitive in the context of our um, subject? Uh, so uh, I in the past, uh, I used to work for CEUs of my business. Okay, so this is a question for you. So, first of all, uh, we have the same technologies our competitors use in terms of handling and uh, transportation. Uh, however, the question is not about the technological area, but the cost of the procedures. Why the rates uh, uh, for loading and uh, um, of loading uh, at our port terminals uh, is higher. So, because at the moment we reached about uh, 60 million tons of our transport hub uh, capacities at our ports. And this year we, uh, we will rehandle about 50 million tons. And this kind of reserves in the States uh, comes up, come up to about 80%. In Europe, it's about 60%. And that provides the level of uh, uh, competition uh, and uh, uh, fighting for 
um, clients, for customers at those uh, terminals. And currently, we are distributing at the beginning of uh, the production year for uh, large tonnage um, um, rehandling. We have quotas, and they are being sold, and there are penalties if because if you didn't take it, you have to um, pay 100%. So that's why we rehandle at $19 uh, minimum or even 22 23 which is a comprehensive rate. And um, uh, uh, they are doing it uh, at 8 and uh, 10, uh, Mexican uh, Gulf at um, uh, 12. So another question, and that's it from us. And I have a comment, uh, very brief. Uh, uh, well, totally, uh, this problem can uh, be called monopolism, and uh, there's so much um, in this word in our country. Quite logical, Vadim Petrichenko, uh, Vladimir Petrichenko, uh, to the last uh, speaker, I would like to say thank you very much because uh, it brought me back uh, to 1982 at uh, our party meeting when the second secretary of uh, the regional um, committee uh, speaking about uh, how bad the things are with our enemies and um, how good uh, the ra, uh, they, they are in, here in Russia. So that's a replica. That's a comment. It's just a, a comparison of the budget of the U.S. and Russian ministries of agriculture. Two numbers, uh, if I may please quote. Of course, they are incomparable because um, no, our budget is mostly mostly consists of uh, a food support program, which is about 110, 112, 20 billion a year. I don't remember exactly, but direct uh, support is about 10 billion. Uh, the situation in the agro market is better now. 10 billion of direct support, uh, and their insurance program is very good. Uh, because uh, they have outlined about five to seven billion uh, for it, and um, uh, it's um, five to seven uh, billion of um, uh, remediation of land. So that's uh, for the farmers and producers uh, in those three areas. Um, uh, not to compare with our 350 billion rubles. Uh, of course, you can't, can't even compare. It's 240. It's 240. I think it was even higher. Okay, colleagues, let's um, uh, uh, wrap up. Well, uh, let's do it offline, and we because uh, we don't have any more time left. Um, um, Mary Nikolaevna, as our uh, eldest participant, please recap and uh, close uh, the session. So, dear friends and colleagues, um, and uh, uh, and the people who. Uh, uh, occupy some progressive positions and help for a good performance in the development of our uh, agro product uh, sphere. We are very thankful to all of you that you have attended and that you've uh, been uh, providing your opinions. Maybe contradictory, doesn't matter very much. Very important is that we researchers and some businessmen also, we somehow try to get together and uh, uh, in a certain social group uh, for us to promote and facilitate the development of our agro-food sphere. Thank you. And if uh, it develops well, we'll, we'll have food to eat. And another comment, we are going to prepare um, uh, a review of our discussion, so please send in your feedback um, and your presentations. Uh, in the full and the questionnaire that uh, we have uh, given to you. Thank you.